In this lesson, we'll learn how to use paint masks inside of Sketchbook Designer. All right, great. So this is the lesson 15 begin file. If you want to open this up and follow along. So um, if you've used any number of different applications, you may have experience with a mask. If this is your first time using some kind of a, a drawing application, then the concept of a mask may be something new to you. Let me just share with you that inside a sketchbook designer, a mask is simply like a stencil. So um, if we're painting on a layer, whether it be with vector uh, curves or whether it be with pixels, a mask is just simply a way to block paint from hitting the canvas to some degree. So um, let me go ahead and show you what I've got going over here in my layer manager. So I've got here a base vector layer and it has kind of some vector uh, curves as well as some filled colors and, and gradients on it. Now what I've got here above that is kind of the gray areas mapped out. So um, these are uh, the areas where we have sort of the same solid gray color. Um, now I do have some gradients again on the base to kind of simulate shadows, but let's say that we wanted to add some paint, some uh, actual pixel paint on top of those vectors so that uh, maybe we can add some almost a cracked texture or something like that. So um, what I've got here again is just those areas isolated. Now if I hide the canvas you'll see that the areas where there is no paint are transparent. So these areas are 100% opaque and the areas outside of that are completely transparent. So um, let's come over here and bring our base layer back and I'm going to hide that gray area for right now because all of the masks inside of Sketchbook Designer are stored right up here. Now you may click on this arrow and notice that there are no masks currently listed under this mask header right here but that's because we haven't actually created any yet. So let's do this though. Let's go ahead and tap and hold on top of the word mask and you'll notice we have two options here. We have the option to create a vector mask or a paint mask. So uh, let's go ahead and choose the paint mask option here. Now you'll notice that nothing visibly changed on our canvas. That's because the mask is created with a completely white surface to it. So when it comes to masks, white is going to reveal everything. Black is going to hide things. That's what you should know about a mask. So um, in the case of this particular mask here, it's been created brand new, so there's nothing on it to hide anything. So um, notice that also up here in the toolbar, uh, the red highlighting. We do have a paint layer selected, but because it is a paint mask, we have a red background behind the palette there. Also, whenever we select one of these tools in the toolbar, you'll notice there's red highlighting there just to remind us that, hey, we're working on top of a mask. So uh, let's come in here on our mask and I'm going to simply make sure I have black selected here. And let's go ahead and just grab, let's grab our solid brush for right now. We'll just deal with um, solid colors and I'll come over to my attribute editor and increase the size of that brush here. Now notice that my color is black. The color I have selected is black. But when I paint inside of this mask, we're essentially painting red. So red in terms of a sketchbook designer mask indicates that that area is hidden. Now watch what happens if I come in here and select a little lighter gray color here. I'll go with like a 50% gray. Notice that the color of red changes. So because we're not painting with pure black, we're painting with let's say 50% gray, the areas where it's more of a pink color than a red color, those areas are going to block 50% of the paint that we're painting in that area. So let's just come over here. Now uh, you'll notice also in our layer editor here, uh, our layer manager, we have uh, the ability to lock our mask layers as well as this little option right here, this little check mark. That's going to enable that current mask. So we can have multiple masks inside our layer manager here. Let me just drag that down. We can have multiple masks inside the layer manager and we can select which one we want to use. So we'll just use this one right here for just a moment. Uh, we'll go ahead and make sure there's a check mark next to that. And I'm going to come down on top of our gray areas and we'll just create a new paint layer here. All right, great. So let me come in here and just grab a completely different color than that red. Let's go ahead and grab maybe kind of a dark blue color here. And I'm just going to run a stroke right through the masked area. 
Now, at this point, let's come over and hide our mask right now. We'll click on this little eyeball, which means that our mask is hidden. So when we do that, you'll notice here that a lot of the paint was blocked on this Paint 8 layer. Now, it looks like not quite all of the paint was blocked, but for the most part, it was blocked here, and about 50% of it was blocked here. So um, you can already see kind of the effect of the mask. Now, because that little check mark is still there next to our paint mask, that means it's still active, even though we can't see it because we've hidden it. So if we came in here and continued to paint, you'll see here that our mask is still doing its job. There we go. Now you can kind of see the effects of the mask on that particular layer. Now, at this point, let's do this. We'll just come over here and tap on our Paint 8 layer. I'm going to just clear the layer out. Let's clear that paint off of it, that blue paint. So uh, we'll go ahead and turn our mask back on. So creating paint masks is really, really easy. We have all of the uh, paint brushes up here at our disposal. Um, we could use an airbrush if we want to create sort of a soft mask effect. Let's just come over and maybe set our color back to black. And we'll just go ahead and grab a nice soft airbrush here. Now you can kind of see we are slowly, gradually layering in that red color here. So we can mask it out very softly, or like I said, with the solid brush, we could come in and paint it in very dense. Like that. All right, great. Now, this is how we create a brand new paint mask, but we can actually repurpose layers down here inside our layer manager and create a mask based on any of these layers. Let me show you what I mean. I'm going to hide my mask for just a moment. Let's come over and hide our base layer as well. And let's look at that gray areas again. Now, these areas are sort of a dark gray color. They're not black, but they're definitely not white. But we do know that they are opaque paint. They aren't uh, transparent. So let's do this. Let's just go ahead and grab this gray areas layer and I'm going to drag it and drop it up here into the mask area. Now Sketchbook Designer is going to prompt us with this dialog. It's going to uh, look for a way to convert this and it wants to know do we want it to observe the luminance only? It's the values between black and white. Uh, do we want it to observe the alpha only? Uh, we know that there's really not an alpha component to this outside of um, basically 100% transparent and 100% opaque. Or do we want it to look at luminance combined with alpha? Let's do this. We're going to go ahead and come in here and just be concerned with alpha only because I know that this isn't pure black. If this was pure black, maybe we could con uh, create this based on luminance, but I want it to basically look at transparent or not transparent. So we'll say alpha. All right, great. Let's go ahead and bring our mask back here. Take a look. I'll go ahead and hide that gray areas. And you can see the mask that was created here. Now, what it's done is it's created black in these areas where that dark gray was because those are the areas that were opaque. Now, in the areas that were not opaque, the transparent areas, it's created white. Now, this particular mask, you can see if I paint black in there, it matches up with uh, the black that's already there. If we were wanting to paint kind of these dark gray areas inside our shoe, then this particular mask isn't going to work. It's going to allow us to paint everywhere but those dark gray areas. So what we would need to do is invert this mask. We can do that really quickly and easily over here just by clicking on uh, that gray mask or gray areas mask and simply dragging down to this option here. Now while we're in here, you also have options to clear out the contents of a mask, to delete the mask altogether, or to duplicate a mask. So um, let me go ahead and go ahead and invert that here. So now what we're doing is we're blacking out all of the areas around those dark gray areas and we're leaving those dark gray areas white. So at this point this is going to work as a stencil for just those dark gray areas. Let's come back over here after we have hidden our mask and we'll go ahead and turn on the base and let's go ahead and jump over here to our paint 8 layer that we created. Now, at this point, I want to use my custom brush, and I'm actually going to jump down here into my custom palette and pick one of these custom brushes here. I'm going to go for kind of a dirty, cracked look. This one looks pretty good right here. So uh, now let me just kind of shrink that back down here. There we go. 
All right, fantastic. Now, let's come in and test this out. We'll just come in on our paint layer. We've got our mask active, and let's go and just come in and paint. So now, if we zoom in, you can see I'm painting this texture, and we're only painting it in these gray areas. We can focus, because of our mask, just on these areas that have this gray fill. Just like so. We'll come over and give this one a little bit of texture as well. And I believe we got one right there. All right, fantastic. So we've used the gray areas as a mask here. And even if I come in at this point and turn off that mask, you'll notice here that we didn't paint any of those areas outside the masked area. Uh, it, that mask isn't hiding existing paint. It's preventing paint from touching certain areas, just like a stencil would. So um, at this point, maybe we would want to come in and begin painting on some of these other areas. But we can always come back to our gray areas mask and utilize it to basically limit the paint we drop onto our canvas to only those areas that the mask specifies. All right, fantastic. So in this lesson, we've learned how to create paint masks here inside of Sketchbook Designer. Now, a paint mask isn't the only type of mask that we can create. We can actually create vector masks, and we'll learn about those in the next lesson.